Floss Tube. It is Chrissy, finally a farm girl. Happy Sunday, happy May. It is May 1st, 2022, and this is my Floss Tube channel. I am so happy to be joining you here this Sunday morning. It is getting close to lunchtime, but it is still morning. I have had a tremendous week. I cannot wait to share it with you. If you're new to my channel, I'm so glad that you're here. I primarily talk about cross stitch on my floss tube channel, but occasionally there could be some other uh, fiber arts that I share. I also love to share story time, um, and sometimes you'll see things, uh, I guess they call it from the stitching vault. But today it is 100% uh, just about whips and finishes and FFOs. If you feel inspired and enjoy my channel and enjoy this video, I hope that you will hit the like button and you will subscribe. So there's also a little bell that I know I typically forget to share that you can um, use the bell and make sure that when new floss tubes come out, uh, you you know, it will let you know, YouTube will let you know. However, I can tell you, I typically record on every Sunday on, um, in the morning is what I, I try to accomplish. That seems to work best for us. Um, okay, so let's get started. My week was, um, I just, I feel like it was filled with so many different accomplishments and that felt so great. Uh, first, and I'm, I might be a little bit all over the board, I'll, I'll try not to be, but you know, throughout the week, Philip and I uh, did our typical thing, but we did, um, we did go to one, it's called Traditions Antique Mall, and we did go there one day later in the week. I was actually looking for something to display with the finish I had, and I did find something, but then it didn't end up working, so, um, but of course it's still adorable and I will, I'll share that another time because I think it will work eventually with one of my, one of my designs. Okay, so um, we did that. I did movie night with my dad for my dad's birthday. Uh, we had, my dad's birthday was April 26th. Stitchy Linda's birthday um, was April 25th. So, and I know a lot of you know that if you watched my last floss tube episode where she joined me, but my dad and I went to uh, see Father Stu, and we actually went to the movie theater. So that was that was really fun. I have not done that in a long time. And although I thought the movie was going to be more of a comedy, and there there was a lot of laughter in it, um, it was also definitely different than what I expected. So I would not give that away, but it was definitely um, there was some language. So I, I'm. I'm gonna let you know that right up front. There is some language, but it's part of it's part of the process in the movie. So, um, but it was Mark Wahlberg was in it. And he did a a phenomenal job, and I believe it's another one of those movies that is just um, it's just quite humbling. So my dad and I did that Wednesday. Okay, so let's get back to Stitchy Linda and our floss tube. Okay, that was fun. That was so fun. I mean, it's just. It's just like, you know, when her and I are together, it's just very easy. And I think that that's, I, I think that's just such a blessing when you have a friend that things just feel easy with. Um, we both can share what we think. We both like different things. And then when you put us together, it's it's just one of those things that I think from all your comments, um, you know, it, it works as a good team. She is a little bit, um, about an hour away from my house, maybe a little less when she goes on the highways. So it's a, it's a drive. I am so thankful for all of your awesome comments. She has read them. Uh, she kept up until she had to go to the, the retreat. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. But anyways, um, I couldn't thank you enough for some of the most sweetest comments. And I have asked her many times, hinted that she should do her own floss tube. She's got a world of cross stitching wisdom, but you have to understand, and I, I know that a lot of people do, especially if you're a floss tuber, when you are a floss tuber, you do open yourself up to some many, many comments, uh, and, the, and the majority of them being so supportive, so loving and caring, and then there are some that um, are not. and. You, it takes um, 
it takes a, a, t a type of, it's not typically my nature. It's not typically my nature to handle things like that, a negative or nasty or whatever comment. So, um, you know, I respect those that say that's just not, it's just not for them. So having her here with me was awesome. And I believe that we've come to this, you know, a, a good balance where our next time um, we will get together, certainly after StitchCon. That is going to be such a fun experience. And I love that I could share that with you now. So I think that in the meantime, if we do another one, we would like to try to do a where she can do it from her home and I, we can do a Zoom one. So I think we're going to try that and I'll let you know when we're going to do that. So I'll, don't you worry. I will get I will get Miss Linda on here um, a little more frequently and I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. And um, I'm you know, very thankful that she made the drive here and, you know, gave up her Sunday a good chunk of her Sunday <laughs> to, to be here and record a floss tube for you all. So anyways, and she had a great birthday. So, all right, what did, oh, okay, next big announcement. I wanted to start off right off the bat. You all had did a fantastic job with the um, Prevent Child Abuse 2022 pattern where I had created the design and then it's been in my Etsy shop. My Etsy shop is finally a farm girl all together. And all the proceeds go to Prevent Child Abuse Georgia. My sister is the director of that chapter. And I am um, so excited to say that I hit my goal. My goal in my head was to be able to donate 500. Donate $500. Um, I am pleased to say that as of last night, I am at $547 and I will just make that an even donation of $550 um, from our sweet community. Um, and I'm, I'm excited. So I'm gonna present this pillow now finished to my sister with the check uh, to Prevent Child Abuse Georgia. And I am so very thankful for all of you who bought it, uh, for all of you who stitched it and shared. I. I love seeing your progress. Continue to tag me. Um, if you uh, ever see the name Jenny uh, L. Stein, that is my sister on Instagram. I know that she's followed a few of you. So I just, um, I, I cannot thank you enough for supporting this, this tremendously worthy cause. So it was really cool to go a solid month and, um, I, I'm just, I'm really proud of us all together. And now we can look forward to a design for 2023 and next April. And I, I pray to be sitting in the same spot doing the same thing. Okay, so that was that, that huge um, ending of a journey. All right, now I had so much fun with a couple of finishes this week that I'm so excited to share with you. Last week I shared with you my uh, Scarecrow Jack mini. That was the first mini that I had said I wanted to go ahead and design for myself, stitch for myself, and put in my Etsy shop. The next one that I wanted to do and shared with you was I had designed specifically for going to stitching retreats, but especially StitchCon. I had bought a retreat bag and it was rather plain. And so I wanted to design something to hang off of my bag which I did, and I shared with you a mouse that was sitting on a vintage tomato pincushion. So I didn't want, I used it yesterday, and but I wanted to show you it hanging off the bag. So this is Matilda Mouse, and this is how I visualized it working for me on this bag, since it was just kind of black and it didn't have any sewing things on it, but the bag itself works really great and had all the functions that I needed. So I designed Matilda Mouse, and I made her have a, a longer, um, like a scissor fob. I finished it like that, but I made it longer so that I could put it over the strap, and then of course take her off when I'm home, and then I'll just put her with a vintage tomato display, which I still need to get working on those. And then the back, I finished like this, 
And uh, these scissors here uh, were a gift at my very first stitch in on my birthday last year from my high school friend who cross stitches Sarah. And so I thought that was kind of precious uh, to be going with me on all my retreats. And then I found these miniature tomato cushion pin cushions at um, Joann's and I'd always spied on them because they were just so cute. And so I thought how sweet to just hang off to the side. Um, if I really did want to put a pin in, in there, I could. So now let me take Matilda off and I'll show you up close. Um, make sure I can get her off gently. some personal. Let's see if I can get her in some better lighting. This is Matilda Mouse stitched up. I will probably restitch her again one day in the future um, or somehow get my name so that I have my name on my bag as well. I went ahead and uh, used my favorite color. It's 924 when it comes to the floss because I love that blue. And you could obviously change her up if you want to. Um, you don't have to have a gray mouse. You can have a white mouse. You can do whatever you want. Um, I found a Weeks Dye Works color, and I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see, but there is some really good variation in there. It was really hard to photograph because it almost made it look like it was too bright, but it is called Fire. Weeks Dye Works Fire, and I feel like it gave it a good, good look. And then this is a, a more brighter green. And I always notice that the vintage pin cushions, they always die, they, they fade a little bit on the top. So I, I used um, a lighter green. I did put pins in there, but I just used uh, French knots. And then I just used the same silver to make it look like the, the head of the pin or the, the pin itself. So. That is Matilda Mouse, and um, she is available in my Etsy shop right now. And I just thought she turned out really, really cute. I used 32 count. Um, I didn't. I knew she might be where she would get, could get a little dirty, so I didn't want to stitch her on white. So I stitched her on the 32 count summer khaki. And of course, this ribbon you can find really easily at Hobby Lobby or Joann's. The only thing that I probably would have done different is I would have stitched it, given it a little bit more room down here so you could see the numbers better. Um, but of course, I didn't want anything huge, huge hanging off my bag. So anyways, I think it worked out just perfect. And she was really fun to stitch, obviously pretty quick to stitch. And I had a good time with her. So um, anyways, and the, the back just turned out. This fabric here, I pulled from Riley Blake's, hold on here a second, a, a, an older one, but it is Riley Blake's Autumn Love. And of course, she's always got some of the perfect fabrics to you know, pick for backing. So this was, the backing came from here and it was at the end of the charm pack and it's this nice, almost cherry tomato red and it worked out perfectly so um these are so great for backing your smalls and uh anyways like i said so this is matilda my husband always tells me i hold things up and then i don't smile long enough so that one was for him just so you know um <laughs> okay then i had another start finish an ffo which I actually showed you a partial last week and I had so much fun stitching. I just didn't wanna, I didn't wanna put it down. So this is my other one that I did and put out this week and it's called Sweet Treats. Okay, so this is my first attempt at um, designing a gingerbread, which I absolutely love. And I know you know that because Becca of Sambri Stitches and I are stitching Gingerbread Grove. I stitched her a gingerbread house last year from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Um, and I 
I do struggle to find a gingerbread that just, um, you just don't find them as much. It's almost like a Mrs. Claus. Yes, you find gingerbread, but in a, maybe like a smaller design. And I just, I really wanted something that was gonna jump out, but I wanted him with a mixing bowl. I decorate very uh, farmhouse country, definitely more country in the kitchen than my living room. And I have Lungeberger pottery and I, I wanted something to look like a hefty, a hefty vintage mixing bowl. And of course I wanted a vintage mixing pin, so it's got a, a red handle. So this is, this is my guy. The floss here is a dyed floss called Ginger Snap. And he's got his hat. And then I absolutely loved uh, the mouse just hanging off the other arm. Like I would like some of that better. So, and this is my, my blue. Uh, that's the 924 that I love so much. And then what I did was I finished the bottom I went a little different. I know that probably a lot of people would have put, you know, gingerbread fabric on the bottom and that would be adorable. But I really wanted it to be where it was something that, you know, had that country feel to it. And so I found this real pretty blue and this coordinating blue flannel. And then I just added a bow and a um, little charm. Oh, it, it feels so nice. There's something really nice about good flannel. Um, some flannels, when I finish, they're too stretchy and that can be hard, but this is a really good one. So <laughs> this is the name of the pattern. It's called Sweet Treats. And uh, I had a good time with him. And you know, he's, he's easy to change to whatever you want. I did stitch him. Um, I think he'd be phenomenal on a blue. You know, you could change this to red the, on the, um, uh, the sparkly, I've lost my train of thought when it came to what you call it. Oh, op opalescent. Yeah. And so anyways, but I did it on more of a neutral again, country theme vintage. So I just, I don't use a lot of blue when I stitch, but I think he would be adorable. I think there you can see the, the sparkles. So I, I have, I had so much fun stitching him. I really, really did. And it's a great, a great piece to take to a retreat. I mean, seriously, it's, you know, solid, 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 solid. It's just, it would be perfect for a sit and stitch or if you're stitching with a friend and you just need to have stuff to fill in. So anyways, so that one was really fun for me to finish up. Between him and Matilda, I was so pleased. I, I really was. And then, I had made the goal with y'all to finish Margaret Alice Parker, 1861. She is my very first antique sampler that I have ever purchased. And I really purchased her with a very, to me, I, I felt like when all was said and done, that this was something that Alice, uh, Margaret Alice Parker's sampler her stitching and I were kind of destined to meet. I had shared with you, I had specific parameters that I was looking for on my first uh, antique sampler to purchase and knowing that I would like to reproduce it. And it just, it just met every one of those criterias. Um, so let me go back and show you, not go back, but let me show you uh, the original first. Um, this is Margaret Alice Parker. Um, now I have to figure out what I'm gonna do with her. I, I will work on the framing situation. Do I wanna frame them the same way? Um, but this is her. So it's, it's mostly a red work, and I've shared with you in the past all the different colors, but that's the original. Let me put that back over here. Um, I will feel very happy to have her safe and framed or somewhere in a permanent nature. Um, and then I do have the finish that I promised you. 
um, last week so that everybody, there is a sale that I believe is going to start. Um, obviously I won't be stitching it, but I will be so happy to see everybody when they, if they could tag me in it, but it's uh, a Mother's Day sale. And this is, uh, let me see if I can get on this side. This is my finish. My very first reproduced antique sampler. Now I stitched mine on 28 count vintage country mocha on the non-modeled side. Her, her fabric was, it's, it's just, it's not, um, it was, it just was very plain. It didn't have, it was dingy. So I wanted to find something that was not dingy, but that it didn't have a lot of busyness to it. And so by taking vintage country mocha and flipping it over, um, I think I accomplished that. So um, anyways, this is her. I will be so happy to go get her uh, framed. And she is now, I was able to surprise myself um, and a few people, and she was in the shop uh, as of yesterday, I don't know if you caught it. I did, I do try to put a note in my YouTube channel, uh, like a picture or insert something just as an update if something goes in early. So this one went in, not yesterday, but Friday, I believe uh, I, she went into the shop. So um, I'm just really, I'm really, really pleased with her. I love the red. I love red work anyways. Uh, there are two greens, a light and a, a, a darker. They're really not that much of a difference. I used, uh, there's a purple you can see right here, only in that area. And then I just, I love the bottom. Now, the, why do I feel like we were destined to meet? Um, you know, my criteria was I wanted a sampler from the 1800s, that was first. I wanted a sampler that it was named, had the person's, the stitcher's name, or the child's name, and their age. I also love red work, and I love a verse that when I put it on my wall, I'm, I'm a very much a visual learner, so I love to keep things on my sampler wall that when I read them, the message, you know, means something. And so when I first saw this, the, me the actual um, verse that Margaret used is, Happy the children who are gone to live with Christ and see his face, who stand around his glorious throne, redeemed by blood and saved by grace. So I wonder, I, I wonder if maybe now Go, spending so much time with Margaret's original sampler as well as stitching my own. Um, I wonder if maybe she lost a sibling. Um, it was so common back then with illnesses and um, I just, maybe, maybe, maybe she saw her mom or her family struggle with the loss of, you know, of a sibling to her and a child to her mom. You know, I don't know, but either way, I think she found a, a beautiful way to take a really hard thing in life that does happen that we often don't speak of. And that is, you know, it doesn't have to be a young child. It can be an adult who loses an adult child. I have watched a woman at church um, who, uh, unfortunately, it's incredibly sad, but she's, she's buried three of her children. That's something we never dream of. Um, but she's, you know, seriously, those were adult children. And then, of course, back in the day, we lost many, many. Um, of course, it makes me think of Mary Todd Lincoln. Uh, you know, she had, you know, uh, has lost her own and the, young and old, a teenage son as well as a four-year-old son. It's something that happens, and it's something that I think that this young girl, Margette, um, took and made a beautiful sampler and took beautiful words and gave us a message that gives us hope. And that's kind of where, you know, I'm going to end it with. So I just believe that it isn't meant for just one person that maybe has lost a child in their lifetime. 
or an adult. I, I just believe wholeheartedly that we were all, um, you know, the way I would see it as well for her is, you know, we were children of God, so that can be everybody. And I just think that that's just got a very sweet message. And I, and again, this is personal. I, I shared that. So, you know, I am so excited and, and really quite truly blessed by all of those who made such um, amazing comments on my floss tube. I believe it was floss tube 39 where I shared um, how it was so personal to me. And, and then so many of you did the same thing. So uh, it's, it's very humbling and it's, it's a blessing. And I am so very thankful for Margette. I'm thankful for her words. And I'm thankful to know that um, she took her time. And then there's these little sweet quirks of hers where be careful um, because it is quite a, it is a sampler that I say is for all skilled levels. Um, it is definitely something a beginner can do who's never done a sampler before. I'm excited to know that my friend uh, Jennifer, Sweet Chaos Stitcher, this is going to be her first sampler to stitch and that just makes me so happy. And I think her love for samplers will grow because mine did when I started with a, you know, just a small first one. And, and then all of a sudden you do find the same way Nicola says from Hands Across the Sea, as you chart something or as you stitch a sampler, you, you do feel a connection to these um, young girls from the past. So she's quite comical. Her border is, is very nice and easy to stitch. Let me pull it back out here. I had hung it up. But one second here. I loved how right here, I like how she and she she inserted the year here. Um, there is a spot in here where she dips down, and you gotta be careful. She she misses it by one. There's the swervy thing, she misses it by one. Be careful. Um these are so nice. Some of them end in a two, some end in a three. Nothing is really hard. And then up here, uh, she has them touching uh, the, the, the dividing um, border here. So it is, it is absolutely perfect for any skilled stitcher. Um, I just, I love that she was eight years old and it was a pleasure. It was absolutely a pleasure. And I am so happy that I was able to accomplish that. Um, for myself as well as for all of those who stitch Margette and I'm so glad that her sampler was brought back um, you know kind of not brought back to life but has been reproduced and um, can mean more to people now and so now I've got to figure out how I want to put those finishes into a fully finish um, because it's exciting to have them both so I know that Kim the stay-at-home quilter is going to stitch her, so please uh, follow along with her and sh you know tag her if you, I don't know if anybody's gonna host the stitch along, but either way, Kim, the stay-at-home stitcher on Instagram is already got her kitted and ready to go. And I know that Susan Stanley, who I love as well, um, I, was so, I was so excited to see that she's gonna stitch her too. Um, I love Susan Stanley and Kim because we just have very similar tastes. Susan Stanley, I love that she has that historic uh, soul. And when she's, whether she's quilting, working with wool, working with wool applique, working with Civil War reproduction fabrics, I just feel like I could connect. I always get so jealous when I see um, her group that gets together and stitches, Sambri stitches and several others. And oh, how I wouldn't love to just be in that group sometimes and stitching um, and just soaking up all of Susan's um, wisdom, historic wisdom on fabrics and everything else. So anyways, I'm, I'm anxious for that. So follow both of them, Susan Stanley and uh, Kim, the stay at home quilter and also Sweet Chaos Stitcher. Okay, so that was that. Now, I also had a FFO 
and I get to share with you. I uh, had my husband run down and pick it up. We had such a busy day yesterday. And I'll share this after I show you, but this is uh, my red cardinal sampler. And I will try and see if I can share with you the detail of the frame. I didn't want a huge, huge frame. I did not put glass on this since it's more of a, um, it's a Christmas stitch, but it's, I will hang mine all year. I love reds. So I, because I've got initials on it, um, I will go ahead and keep it out. But I just absolutely loved this. So. And I do love this one. With, this is so fun. Anyway, so I got this stitched. Um, Mike at Hobby Lobby uh, does my, my framing in the Mount Dora Hobby Lobby. And he always does a really good job for me. And I love that their frame selections are, are coming back in. With COVID, they lost a lot of selections and I'm starting to see that their frame choices um, are filling back up again. So that was really nice. But this is Red Cardinal Sampler by Owl Forest Embroidery. Um, this is the, you know, it was just such a fun stitch. I had purchased this a long time ago, and I'm gonna be honest, I had one person leave a not very kind message for the, f basically addressing the fact that I stitched an Owl Forest embroidery pattern because Owl Forest embroidery is out of Russia. Um, my only response to that was I had started this much before anything was happening between Russia and Ukraine. These are the comments that I know keep some people from doing floss tubes. I didn't start the war. I just wanted to stitch something and honor my family. Um, so it was one of those things that I had to just take a step back and it's um, it's not easy for somebody to, to get a message like that because that would never have been you know my intent. But it's a good time for me to just share that those messages do happen and it's unfortunate. Um, so it, it takes nothing away from my piece and it takes nothing away from the people that I stitched it in honor of. Um, so I'm, I'm anxious to, to get this on my wall today. So I had, I had, I had Margaret Alice Parker was a finish. I had Matilda the mouse was a finish. I had the gingerbread finish. I, um, it was just a really great week. So Saturday was my um, second ever retreat. It started, it's called the Bare Bones Retreat, and it was hosted by Brick City Cross Stitch, which is my local needle workshop. Uh, if you follow me, you know that by now. Um, now it started, it went Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and it was in Ocala, Florida, and I, so I just went up for Saturday. So I, you know, Linda, Stitchy Linda was there, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I don't know of all the people that I saw yesterday um, who went for the whole the whole retreat. Uh, but, you know, my day was awesome, and Randy and Philip dropped me off. They went just a little bit farther to make a day out of it. They went up to Gainesville and spent some time with my daughter who's up there for school, and she also works, at, um, works up there. So they went and spent some time with her. They... Um, Philip, they just did some random fun things that sometimes, you know, when I go to the mall, I'm shopping and doing things. And when dad takes them to the mall, they sit down in those massaging chairs. And I have a picture of Philip in the massage chair, just like, you know, <laughs> loving every minute of doing something different. So it worked out great. I was able to, to just sit back, stitch, which I don't often get to do. Uh, a lot of times I'm running up to Brick City and then I'm running back. So it was nice to get to sit right next to uh, Linda and uh, Melissa from Neely's Needle. She's also a floss tuber. I was across the table across from us, had uh, Stephanie who is so, oh boy, let me look it up for you. One second here. I, I always wanna say it's so Glover, but I'm gonna get it wrong. But she's another floss tuber and it was so nice to actually get to see her. And I knew I recognized her face. Yes, see, So Glover Creations. Uh, Stephanie Glover from So Glover Creations. Uh, there was just, there was 
Um, my friend Marie was there. Um, it was just, it was a lot of fun. And they had the freebie table. They had um, also a table where you could make donations for a local um, charity uh, that Jean always, she always has something going for this particular charity. And I, and I love that. I absolutely love that. So part of my haul is they had at the, uh, I got two things from the free table. One was a, where did I put that one? One was a, I must have put it in my project bag. Um, one was a shepherd's bush. And I was going to show that to you. I had the button, a patriotic one. So I'm excited about that. Then I got so excited because I was able to pick up one, two, three, four Lizzie Cates from like the donation table. So the first one I got, I'm going to have to get my glasses on for this one. And you know how I feel about Lizzie Kate. So the first one is a Flip It for November Lizzie Kate. And I, I'm excited I can stitch um, a nice little small to add to my fall tray that I have. So that was that one. I picked up another Flip It Blocks with Charm. Now, I don't need to have the charm, but this was December. Love the gingerbread. And then this one is Winter ABCs, a little sampler, a snippet. Um, really cute. That's that. Okay, I got, let me take this one out. This is called, and it has all the stuff. This is called Lizzie Kate Fall Fanatic. All right, here we go. That was the cat, knocked all my stuff down. Just so she could lay on a project bag. Um, but anyways, let me see if I can get this better. It doesn't seem to want to show up good. There we go. Okay, Fall Fanatic. And I, I got it because I like that little frog. And the Trick or Treat bat. Really, those two I kind of loved. But it has the charms, a spider and a squirrel. It has everything. Um, some really cute charms that go with it. So there's bugs and hisses, and that's the frog, and trick or treat for the bat, and then autumn greetings is the one that has the squirrel. So I was excited about that. Then I did catch, which I haven't shared with you in a long time, um, when I was looking for some sort of a cross stitch for Paris. I did pick one with my friends that we are gonna stitch um, Sarah, the one who gave me the, the scissors pin. She stitched the first part. She's stitching the first part. We're gonna do it in thirds. Three of us high school students that went to Paris on our senior trip, me, Sarah, and Hope, are all stitching one pattern for ourselves and we're also stitching a third of it to go to my teacher um, who is um, Mrs. Arendt. So anyways, Sarah started first, and when she finishes, which she's very close, then we'll get together and have a, a day of stitching, and then I will take it and stitch my third. But I also wanted something for like my my, my style. Um, I like them. I like them both. One is a little more whimsical, and it had everything our teacher liked. This one is definitely more my style, and I saw this on the um, on the freebie one, the freebie table. So I love this and we'll probably do it in either, a, a, I don't know if I'll do it in a black, a red, or a blue. This one is just three browns, three DMC browns. And I will probably do, I could tell you I would love DMC 115, but I also found another um, color yesterday and I will have to get it and then I'll show you, but it's called, I think it was Blueberry um, that on another um, stitcher that I got the pleasure of meeting yesterday and she is working on oh gosh a long dog and it's just gonna be gorgeous so that might work really good with this but but anyways if I'm, I'm kind of always drawn to red but I really was glad to to pick that one up so that was that was kind of a little bit of a portion of haul and that was at the retreat 
I won, um, I won one of the drawings. So I got to roll a dice and that was fun. And then whatever number you get is the number of like a gift card to Brick City Cross Stitch. Um, so that was, that was kind of a hoot. And um, it was just, all in all, it was a really good day. And the best part is that Philip and Randy were safe and Philip had a good day. It's, it's a longer day when I'm asking them and we do, there's really no need to have two cars. When we moved from the farm, we didn't, we didn't keep the truck. Uh, we still have the, the girls are here quite a bit. So their cars are in the driveway. And so we pretty much, you know, we'd rather have a golf cart one day. So every now and then it's, it's tricky with just the one car, but we found something nice for them to do. And it was so wonderful that Philip had such a good day. And, um, I loved that for, I loved that for them. And it was a good day for me to just stitch and be um, with friends. And it felt so wonderful to have met so many deadlines. So, um, whips. All right. So this was so cool. Um, I went ahead and when I had finished Margaret, I, I, just didn't know what I was in the mood for. And I knew mania was coming. I knew I had pulled out all the things and shared with you with Linda last week. I definitely have model stitching to do um, for Twin Peak Primitives. Oh my goodness, I saw it. They have some really good ones I can tell coming out. I'm only seeing sneak peeks, but there's some really good ones that I know are gonna be coming our way. So um, that being said, probably this week will be a I'll probably dedicate almost every single night or daytime. I'll pick it out to the, the model uh, for Twin Peak Primitives. However, I was in the mood to work on my Bluebird Quaker. That is the only thing that struck me. And I thought, well, that's in my, that's in my mania plans. So if I'm in the mood for it and it strikes, I just picked it up and I am probably 98% and I will have a finish tonight. I really tried to get a finish in yesterday, but you know, it's kind of hard to not want to talk um, and, and focus. So I was able to get that last, last time I showed it to you, I needed to get the, the third one of these in, uh, finished page two, and then this is page three. So I was able to see here sorry about that okay so I was able to do all of this and this met up at the retreat so there was some celebrating on my part going there I got all this accomplished I did all this last night finished this and all I have to do is two letters and this little bit right there's something right there that just squares it off and I have a finish. <sighs> that like that feels so good because this is an older whip. Now, let's go back and start this the right way. This is Quaker Bluebird Sampling or Sampler. It is by Willow Hill Samplings. My mom and I started this a year and a half ago when she came for a stitchy weekend where we started five projects. And if you followed me from the beginning or for very long, you'll know about that weekend or weekish, but that was big for us. Starting five, five whips because we had been binge watching floss tube and learning about floss tube. And we went for, we thought five, and that was huge for us. This was one of the five. So I, I just absolutely feel so good about uh, being ready to have a finish on it. So let me show it to you again. Um, and I love that it's finally, I finally have something that's a more vertical type of a piece. Let me get this back here. But it is stitched on 28 count vintage country mocha. There you go, is that gonna work? My chair squeaking. This is really, <laughs> doesn't work very well, but there you go. I'm excited. Can you tell? <laughs> but if I get it up close, there you go. I am, I use the floss blackboard, which is 
it says black, but it's really this really beautiful blue. Um, and it changes really nicely. So it is uh, the Gentle Art Blackboard and the number is 7051. It's, it's probably really hard for you to see that it's a blue. Um, but I love it on Vintage Country Mocha and it was such a joy to stitch on it. And that's it. And I think this is, I think this is actually like my first Quaker would be, I would consider this my first Quaker. I've done Quaker motifs a little, but never where that was what um, the title of it was or, or that it was used as the framework of the piece. So um, it was, if you're interested in it, uh, it is a PDF download. And um, I have decided um, that I have, I have my mom's, as well because we both had it started and she had gotten the first there's three different motifs with the um with the birds in it the bluebird let me see if i can find it okay she had gotten the first one done and what i think i'm going to try to salvage this is this is where she had gotten and um, let me just look here at the pattern one second. I, I think what I'd like to do is try, I, I thought maybe I could make that a pin cushion. And then at least, at least I'm salvaging something. I've tried really hard to take any of my mom's things that she had put some good effort into um, and, and make them bring them to life in a finish somehow, some way, you know, and the original being Jane Fittes, which was, you know, that one's really quite special. But this one, I just, I hate to not put used to it. So I think what I'm gonna do is practice making finishes in a shape more than a square. And I will follow this and I will make a pin cushion. So that's my idea. She's missing a little bit right here but I think that would be perfect to hang a charm on. Maybe a little heart charm, maybe an I love you charm, something like that. So, you know, let me know what you think. But I think that that would be a good save on that. Um, and I like, I, again, I'm there, this'll be, this is my plan is to finish this today. I'll have fully finished to show you next weekend. Um, but I'm so thrilled. I'm absolutely so thrilled to have something from my old whip pile done. And it only took, it only took a floss tube with Stitchy Linda for her to give me that look like, <clears throat> you need to finish that. And I did. So, all right. Um, next plan. The only thing I did not get done is I am part of the Summer House Sal with Fat Quarter Cross Stitch. This is the bag. I showed you all the goodies last time. They have released their full part or the first part of the mystery stitch along. And you will get that, you, you get it emailed every week. Um, so I need to put a start into this. And that is in my plans this week. Um, Friday the 29th was when they first put out the first part. And you'll see uh, Sweetwater Stitcher has started it. There's many that have um, a fun start on this and I'll be part of that, you know, this week. So, that just didn't get done with the retreat and everything yesterday and wanting uh, with the promise of Margaret getting finished for y'all. I pushed that off by one day, but I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Um, okay, so Linda's birthday start. Stitchy Linda's birthday was the 25th, as y'all know, and I we shared what we picked. She picked for her birthday start a UB Designs, and I'm just gonna bring this out, okay. She picked this, it's called Merry Christmas by UB Designs. Put it over here. It's really, really cute. But oh my goodness, oh my goodness y'all, there's one over one in this and yes, I know I shouldn't be afraid of it and I'm not, but it, like I didn't see that coming in this kind of a, a pattern. I, I really, I looked at it and I thought, this is gonna be a quick stitch. Not so, not so at all. The pattern size itself is so much bigger than I thought. 
Um, beautiful pattern. I mean, oh my gosh, the pattern is really just so beautiful. And I did get a start in it. And I'm going to show you my teeny tiny start. We are stitching it on. Get my glasses back. We are stitching it on 28 count cashel clay. We didn't want it to be light or white. And this is, okay, this is my start. So I am, I am here on the bottom. And this is where I got. I can't, I'm not sure we have weird, there we go. But this border, this border in that little chunk changes. Um, one, I realized I was missing two DMC flosses. I had forgot when I went and got them, there was like 30 DMC that they were out of two. So immediately I needed one that I didn't have. Okay, no problem. But in this, there are like, in that little section, there are like three reds, three reds. And there's some, I'm not gonna call it confetti, but I immediately made sure that I um, had my little needle book here and I, I, I made sure I was threading up so that I was ready because I am not gonna be able to accomplish a border like that with one needle. Um, it's beautiful because the colors, the reds fade into each other. So, but at the same time, you're, you're obviously changing quite a bit. So I did, I did get a start. I'm very proud of my start. But, um, and Linda, the same thing. Linda, she started, was gonna, she wanted to start center. So she's up in here. So you're gonna see starts all over. But <laughs> what kills me is that Chris Leedy, um, Chris Leedy, who I've shown you her finishes before. She always lets me um, borrow her cute little finishes. So she shared with um, Ruby Rabbit and she did the, um, Prevent Child Abuse Finish, those are all the finishes she's that I've shown you. So you know who Chris Leedy is, she lives here locally. She joined us in this stitch along and she is so much farther. I mean, she has been plowing away at this. So if you wanna see what the progress looks like and the pattern itself looks like, or the um, progress, you know, go check out her, her Instagram page. She's already up here on this angel and then she shared with us there's more one over one on the angel i spotted it in the heart um but i i believe she said there's some in the feet so anyways we we bought this from down sunshine lane a cross stitch shop that carries ub designs so um anyways <laughs> it was a, a little bit again a little bit shocking because we didn't know that it was that big let alone have one over one um but I'm using my sweet little mouse bag and she had so kindly gifted me the the extra little pouch that went with it the needle the needle bag and this is by um it's she she it's m-i-l-a-s sweet makes Milas sweet makes and that's her uh, etsy shop so i don't know if you can see it right there probably not Milas Sweet Makes. Um, but that is the house that, that this one will have for Linda's. And, um, but yeah, it was definitely, definitely different than we thought. So I kind of had to put that down to, to accomplish the other finishes because that one's going to be more of a tedious stitch than I had anticipated. Um, and then I think I can do, I've, don't have too much of haul, and that's really nice. But I did finally get something really special to me. And just, um, I've watched her do make so many beautiful things, but her shop is the Old Needle Shop. And her name's Terry. Um, and you've probably heard about her many times from like Brenda and Laura. She does a lot of uh, beautiful finishes. She's a finisher, uh, but she also sells some of her own finishes. And so this is what I picked up. Um, whoops, that doesn't make much sense, does it? She does these um, monogram letters and then she makes them into the scissor fobs for you or something else. But it was just another find. I have my favorite pair of scissors that I actually bought from Brick City Cross Stitch uh, a, a while ago. And it's these. And I have this scissor fob from Overis on it, which I love. But I wanted something 
nice for on these because I tend to use them the most. But I, I wanted something like that for my bag um, for when I go to StitchCon. So anyways, this was just, her finishing is just exquisite. So I was excited to, to have that. So that was haul and I'm gonna put that on my scissors and rotate my red Rovers fob to my other scissors um, because you can never have enough scissors. And then the last thing I was gonna talk about as far as plans go is, I didn't think this was gonna go an hour, guys. I really didn't. I just had a bunch of finishes, um, but here we are at 55 minutes. And um, <laughs> I hope you saw something that you liked. I, I really thought I was just gonna show, up a bunch, show a bunch of my finishes and I was like, ah, it'll be a half hour. Well, guess what? Um, okay, so since I'm gonna have, I had these finishes, but since I had an older finish, um, I have been talking with Carolina Cross Stitcher and we, you know her and her husband because they make the beautiful um, b scap hand, mm, geez, I can't think of the word for it right now, but they are to hold your scissors in. And um, when I get everything ready for this start, I will share it with you. Um, but if you look up Carolina Cross Stitcher, you will see what her and her husband make. And I can't think of it, it's, the, it's hand, um, geez. It'll come to me in a minute but it's a beautiful they make beautiful things out of wood her husband does and they sell them about every i believe it's every other sunday now and she if you just find her on instagram you will see what i'm talking about but i have mine in a display in a child's hutch with me in this uh in my bedroom um, which i'll send i can share a picture of it but anyways i have always wanted to do mary clayton and her and i did a hands across the sea sampler um, not too long ago and she has finished hers i did finish mine quite a while ago and i'm trying to think of the name of it but it was the one with the four-year-old girl and we had talked about doing another hands across the sea and just consistently going you know with that so i said well i have mary clayton and i actually had her kitted up i just had changed fabric ideas um because i decided i wanted to do something a little more neutral so we are going to start Mary Clayton, I believe in about a week. She has received her pattern and she's deciding between um, DMC or silks. I have all my DMCs ready to go. I love this blue that's in it. So it's yummy. And I have decided, I told her I was gonna go through my stuff, but I really think I am going to use the Legacy Linen, and it is a 30 count. I have a fat half of pecan shortbread. I have these things in my stash. I loved utilizing Hoop and Frame, and Hoop and Frame has a website. Hoop and Frame is also on Instagram, but they um, always carry Legacy Linen, and they also do some kitting up of the linen and the silks for certain hands across the sea um, samplers. So I think that I'm gonna go with this, and I love this pecan shortbread. Um, anyways, and so this is gonna be a start um, with Carolina Cross Stitcher. You know, that's just, gonna, that's just gonna bug me. So I am going to take two seconds and look it up, because it's Peter and Kath. Um, hold on one second here. I hope y'all had a good week. I hope you got to do so much stitching. And, uh, okay, so. I know it's Kathy and Peter, but, okay, so like this one here. I wanted to know, a bee skip. And, oh, he's Sycamore. But here, let me see that, there you go, there you go. I mean, they're so beautiful. And so what I do is I have this little child's hutch next to a spool cabinet, which is my end table. Um, and I have my miniature Longa Burger baskets in there. And I have some stitching pin cushions, like more antique. And then I keep it in there. And one, it makes, 
if I need my scissors, I, I have them that's in there. Um, so anyways, she has, they have lots and they always have them out. Like you can tell, like they have different woods and they always give you the price. So it's really, really easy. I'll show you this one. I love these. This new one with the. Um, let me see if I can find one that's. Oh yeah, we did Rosa Sugars. That's who we did. So Kathy and I did Rosa Sugars. This one. From Hands Across the Sea, and this is her finish. So that's when I knew we were ready to do another another one, but I wanted to show you their new ones with the lid. Um, Hand turned, that was the word I was looking for. Why couldn't I come up with that? Oh, this, um, I like the, I love it with the glass knob on top. Like that is so beautiful. I could just share these like all day, her, whew, so pretty. Anyways, all right, I'll put that down now because that's just, but you can get caught up in all those, uh, beautiful things that people hand make. So I'm going to go ahead now and I am going to sign off and tell you that I am um, so thankful for all your wonderful comments. I hope that you will um, subscribe to this channel. I am getting very close to 7,000 subscribers. And I know that the last time I did a fun celebration was at 4,000 subscribers. So what I'd like to do is please double check um, your, you know, your subscription and make sure that you are a public subscriber. And when I hit the 7,000, um, I will have a fun giveaway. And I know this time it will include some of my patterns, but I will also make sure that it includes some, um, some other goodies as well. And I'll put together a nice box like I did last time. The, uh, to this week for a giveaway, I would love to offer um, Margaret Alice Parker and Matilda if, you know, you want to choose or have both um, because maybe a sampler isn't isn't your thing. So you can always let me know. So this week, I would like um, you to just use the word sampler. And if it's, you know, something that you're interested in as far as the giveaway, just make sure you use the word sampler. You don't have to use it in a sentence. And just follow the typical giveaway rules, which are you need to be over 18 because I will need your address to mail it to you. Um, and it, it has worked out really good with some of these. If you have an email and you're okay with it, I can send you the PDF and you get it right away. And that's just so much easier, uh, for everybody. So anyways, but this week's giveaway for, will be for the Margaret Alice Parker and Matilda the Mouse. So if you are interested, just use the word sampler and, um, good luck. I think that, um, both of those will be so fun to stitch. And other than that, I know my plans are, I've got a finish coming. I'm gonna get down to the framers. Next weekend is the um, stitching with the Flossies. So I will be right back where I was for the retreat Saturday. And that is gonna be something I'm excited to share some pictures about, or pictures with you on my next floss too, um, because that'll be really fun. I get to go sit and stitch and do just what I did, uh, just in a little bit different capacity. Um, once again and then maybe maybe i do know that the shop is going to be open after that that stitching with the flossies uh from three to five so i may need to go pick some things up so we shall see either way um you know have a wonderful day have a wonderful week stitching be good to each other um, smile because it's contagious and um you know by all means just don't forget to floss bye guys